Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to North America's very first mass-produced hydrogen semi-truck. Yes, folks, that's correct. Nikola Motors has climbed the mountain and launched the country's very first hydrogen-powered Trey FCEV, marking its leadership in the ever-growing hydrogen electrification market globally. When it comes to technological prowess, fuel cells are nothing new. They've been around for more than 50 years and they were also used on the space shuttle that went to the moon. But only now are we seeing costs come down, adoption grow, and practicality improve for the power and energy efficiencies that hydrogen fuel cells can provide to not only the stationary market, but also now the transportation sector. For those that don't know, hydrogen is already used significantly as an industrial gas for various processing facilities like glass manufacturing, steel processing, as well as the creation of ammonia and fertilizers. However, in the clean energy transition, hydrogen also offers a new pathway to decarbonize our really hard to abate sectors to the use of fuel cells, where hydrogen can obviously be used to make electricity with zero combustion and zero emissions. And that right there, folks, is exactly why this hydrogen fuel cell semi-truck in North America is such a big deal. Not only because it validates the success of a startup like Nikola, who has struggled to gain traction with the media and even independent investors over the past few years, but also for the broader community who focus on reducing the impacts of climate change and really improving the driving experience for the transportation sector. So exactly how soon can we expect to see Nikola's hydrogen trucks on the road? And what are the pros and cons of adopting this hydrogen powertrain over something like batteries or diesel? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, folks, let's first understand why this product even exists in the first place. Who's going to buy it? Why are they going to buy it? And what are the benefits that this solution is going to provide over the conventional diesel and compressed natural gas trucks we see on U.S. roads today? And to answer that question promptly, we need to first look at some really important data. And what better place to start than understanding that medium and heavy duty semi trucks in the US account for around 24% of all the emissions released by the transportation sector in the country. Meanwhile, they represent just 1.3% of the actual unit volume of vehicles on the road. That means that discounting aircraft and other smaller, more specialized vehicles, your average Class 8 semi-truck can release almost 20 times as much carbon emissions totally than your conventional car. At this point, folks, it's not even a question about worrying about climate change. It's now a question of worrying about pollution, air quality, as well as the lack of efficiency that exists in conventional diesel engines on the road. This disparity between what a car emits versus what a Class 8 semi-truck emits means that we're going to drain our fossil fuel resources faster than ever before. And the reality is that we cannot simply phase out diesel engines as is and reduce the demand and the supply of trucks on the road. Because it turns out that over 8% of US GDP in 2022 can be attributed in some way to the logistics and trucking industry, which includes not only short haul, but long haul applications, which the US has the biggest market of. Over six and a half billion tons of freight is transported by trucks every single year. And a majority of that is done during 100 mile to 250 mile stints during one day with a lot more of them happening at 240 to 499 and then gradually decreasing as we go over to 1000. And although on the surface this chart makes it very clear what we need to be focusing on, it actually creates more controversy and more confusion about what kind of product 
the trucking industry really needs to reduce its emissions. On the one hand, you have battery electric trucks that use a proven platform carried over from electric vehicles that are flooding the auto market today. But on the other hand, you have issues with sustainability, weight, fires, as well as the cost of operating these extremely big trucks with massive lithium and cobalt resources. Tesla, for example, has already demonstrated just how difficult it is to scale up batteries into massive semi-trucks. Not only did they delay the launch of their vehicle by almost three years, but for somebody like Pepsi, who has been the launch partner of the Tesla Semi, they have had to make a significant amount of investment into charging infrastructure to refill these trucks as quickly as possible which even with the best chargers at, let's say, 750 kilowatts, can take north of 60 minutes. And with the way that the world has worked for the past 100 or so years, that kind of solution of using big batteries doesn't really seem to be a long and well-thought-out solution, at least given the technological restraints we have today. People are simply accustomed to refilling at gasoline or liquid stations and filling up their trucks in a short amount of time. Not to mention the fact that the duty cycle of an equivalent charging station versus a diesel, hydrogen, or natural gas one is going to be much, much lower, which means you're going to be able to refuel much less trucks during the same 24-hour period if your station is running at full capacity which isn't really going to be a profitable business for any sort of third party like Shell, Chevron, or ExxonMobil to invest in. This is exactly why somebody like Pepsi has to build their own recharging stations, which does obviously require a really big bank balance. And this cost doesn't even include the time it takes to permit a site like this, which in this case is north of 3 megawatts onto the grid, which can take north of 6 to 12 months and add instability to the electric grid itself. And this right here, folks, is exactly why hydrogen technology is being researched, tested, and now officially commissioned for the heavy duty and semi-trucking space. Because although diesel and natural gas are fantastic at what they do, they are still limited resources and simply provide a much more difficult driving experience compared to a fully electric one. With Nikola's both battery and hydrogen trucks being the only few in the market that are actually available to review by independent third parties and journalists, we've gotten a really good idea of exactly what truckers want from these vehicles and how this kind of technology really conforms to the new demands of the next generation. Not only is the electric powertrain essentially seamless to operate with no gear shifts and no noise or vibration, but it also provides a much faster response for getting onto the highway or responding to emergency situations. With an efficiency of north of 55 to 60%, this fuel cell powertrain also happens to achieve a much better energy efficiency than your conventional diesel engine, although it is not up to par with something like a full-on battery electric solution. Although that means that the cost of running this kind of vehicle is going to be slightly higher in the short term because of the lack of scale in hydrogen infrastructure, it also does mean when it comes to the benefits the solution provides in the form of faster refueling times and lower weight, it also does mean that we are still making an improvement from the previous generation technology. So will we start seeing Nikola's hydrogen trucks on the road immediately? Well, not quite, because the company has to ramp up production and there needs to be more incentive for companies to invest in this kind of product, which is definitely going to be two to three times as expensive as a current diesel semi-truck north of around $400,000, which does not include any sort of incentives. And well, the very first thing that needs to happen to get these vehicles on the road is going to be selling them to independent dealers. And although the dealer network right now in the U.S. is huge, those for electric trucks is still relatively small because there's simply a new infrastructure requirement, a new cost incentive, and a new business model for operating with an electric vehicle. 
And Nikola themselves have a good list of dealers throughout the country where you can actually potentially see for yourself and test out both the battery electric and the fuel cell electric truck. But let me give you a fair warning that if you don't live in California, the chances of you seeing this hydrogen truck on the road over the next two to three years is going to be extremely slim. And why is that the case? Well, because the only national public hydrogen network only exists in California. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Not only is California the richest state in the country, but it also has the best incentives for companies to invest in clean technologies. And that is certainly going to be a great test bed for something like Nikola's hydrogen truck. So although you're not going to see small businesses buying these kinds of electric trucks from Nikola anytime soon, there is still a very big market for this kind of solution at a time when the costs are still comparatively high. Over time, as scale reaches the industry and as more infrastructure is built out with rising demand for cleaner hydrogen, the truck costs will come down and we'll see more and more of these on the road. As of right now, though, Nikola's launch is a great validation of where the technology stands today and the new solutions we need to reduce emissions in the Class 8 market. Nikola currently has 223 non-binding orders for their hydrogen truck from a total of 23 customers like JB Hunt, AJR Trucking, Biagi Bros, TTSI, and Bayotech. So certainly this space is going to be one to watch over the next couple of years. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.